Every season of Survivor is a story. There are our main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We are going to look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we are only observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned, as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And with that... 39 days, 18 people, 1 survivor! Jessica Sugar Kuiper, a 29-year-old retro pinup model from Brooklyn, New York, was a castaway on Survivor's 17th season, Survivor Gabon. And finally, Survivor has made the leap to high definition, and what a world of difference this makes as they are visiting Africa for the second time in the show's history, and the cast we have here are 18 new players. We learn that Exile Island is back with a hidden immunity idol being hidden there, and then we meet our 18 castaways who are told by Jeff that the two oldest players here Bob and Jillian will be in charge of drafting the two tribes. Now you might be asking a great question. Why are they doing this? It has never worked. In fact, they did this exact same twist in season five, and that was one of the worst seasons of all time. And the different variations of it that they've used in the three other seasons, that didn't work either. But like a stubborn mule, Survivor is doing it again. Sugar is drafted onto the Yellow Coda tribe by Ace, a guy with a sketchy British accent who says, what's a photographer without their model? Their tribe then wins reward, even beating out the Olympic runner Crystal who somehow finishes last. And at their camp, we get our first confessional from Sugar. I'm excited, this place looks beautiful. <laughs> but there's really wild animals out here. <laughs> this is really Africa. <laughs> So I'm not gonna get in the water right now and I'm not gonna be bathing or swimming in the lake with my tribe mates. <laughs> that isn't much, but it does tell us that she seems giggly and she's in a good mood. I can definitely see this as making her appear dumb to some, depending on their point of view. And we then see her be a positive reinforcement for Bob as he builds the huts. Now, despite Bob being chosen to draft the tribes and Ace acting like a know-it-all, it's really Marcus who is the leader of these Coda people. Everyone wants to follow him. He's kind of like the golden boy. Anyways, Fong is such a hot mess that Sugar's tribe gets little screen time as they win back-to-back -back immunity challenges. Wow, that's it. That's the premiere. All we know is that Sugar is a giggly pinup model, and that's it. But if you have looked at the runtime of this video, you know that something is clearly off because why are they introducing us to her like this? Why is she such a non-factor when in fact she is a huge part of this season? By the way, if you want to pick what subjects I cover, including story videos, rankings, and even amazing race content, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Our show is patron supported and that's why you don't see sponsors in any of these videos, as the patrons are the ones with the power to dictate what videos are made. If this interests you, then check out the link in the description. Thank you for your support. Episode 2 has us learning from Sugar that Ace is her number one in this game and he has her back, despite most people not liking him and his know-it-all attitude, so she's kind of aligned with the tribe's jerk. Coda then loses reward, a bit surprising considering how bad of a tribe Fong is, and Sugar is sent to Exile Island. Fun! Right away she is given a choice. She can either have comfort, which is the shack with some food in it, or a clue. She picks the clue, and then goes on a hunt for the idol. Now keep in mind, it's only episode 2, and the only other person in the history of the show to have found an idol by episode 2 is Yule, and he's like one of the smartest players of all time, so Sugar's odds here are very low. I did Survivor because I thought it might help me grow up a little bit and get a thicker skin and get over, not get over, but deal with my father's death. I can't even say it. My father passed away seven months ago. I'm trying to, trying to keep it together because when I stay in survival mode, then I don't get like this. 
I'm sure I'll be a stronger person by the end of it all. Playing this game will help me at this time in my life. Through creatures unknown, you'll have to wade. Among the limbs that reach skyward, your deliverance shall be made. Hopefully the idol, right? Not another clue? Oh my god. Come here. Oh my god, I found it! Okay, good. Thank god. When Fong sent me to exile, I thought maybe they thought I was dumb and that I'd never find the idol. No way. My dad's been with me this whole time, so I feel like he's been helping me. Um, he's here. I spoke too soon, apparently. Sugar has now matched Yule's record, and we also get some great personal content from her. They were really holding out on us in episode one. Back at camp, we see Corinne, self-proclaimed villain, and Bob talk about how Ace is just dragging Sugar to the end because she is weak. Wow, it's episode two. They haven't even been to tribal council yet, and the perception of Sugar is that she's worthless. What did she do or not do in episode one? I'm confused. Coda goes on to lose immunity, and Sugar then lies to everyone and says she couldn't find the idol. It was too hard, and people believe her. To be fair, it has only ever been found once this early in the history of the show, so I don't blame them for not thinking that she has found it yet. She then tells Ace about the idol. Why? Telling anyone is a bad move, especially this early in the game. Thankfully for her, people want Paloma out, who she's not aligned with anyways. So we go to tribal council and Jeff asks, what gave you strength on exile? And she replies, her dead father did. And she starts to cry. Corinne has this face of, yeah, whatever, shut up sugar. But then Paloma is indeed voted out seven to two. Paloma, tribe has spoken. <laughs> Episode 3 begins and it's a tribe swap already and that ends up with Sugar being the only person to go undrafted. She has to go back to Exile Island and whichever tribe loses a person this episode will take her in. So she goes to Exile Island for the second time and... Comfort time! When I got to Exile, there was a choice between comfort and the clue and I already have the idol so I chose comfort. <laughs> I walked up to my sugar shack. It was like Christmas morning. There was pineapple and oranges and apples and coconut. I'm hoping that I go back to Fong so that I can be with Ace. Episode four begins and we see that since Fong was the tribe that had to vote someone out, she joins them, which is okay because Ace is here. They're still a hot mess though. Crystal, the Olympic runner, says that after all those days on Exile, Sugar has to have the idol, right? And she needs to be voted off next. But let's ignore strategy for the moment as their entire tribe finally sees the elephant that has been making so much noise at night, and it is a beautiful sight. Maddie and Ace even row out onto the water to take a closer look. But then Fong loses reward, and Sugar is crossing her fingers that they won't send her to Exile Island. Might as well have her mail forwarded there, because Sugar's going again. <laughs> That's all right. I've already named it the Sugar Shack. It's <laughs> Dan, why sending sugar again? No strategy, pur purely comedy. <laughs> when Coda sent me to exile, they said it was for pure comedy sake, which is hilarious because I was thinking the joke's on you. Everybody else in the game is tired and starving and stinky and dirty as I'll get out. And I am living high on the hog in Eden all by myself with my own lake and fruit and comfort. And I'm a very happy camper now. I mean, give the girl a break, why don't ya? It's good of Sugar to take this in stride, but the meanness of the Kota tribe continues as after she comes back from Exile Island, it is time for immunity, and Sugar is the caller for Ace, who is blindfolded. Here's where we stand. This is the fifth and final round. Fong has seven. Coda has six. One throw left. Go! Right, right, right there, right there! Yes, you got it, you got it! Freeze, Ace, freeze, Ace, freeze! Right there, right there, right there! Oh, Randy pulls the best one on Ace, and that'll do it! Yes! Yes! Coda scores! Coda wins the game! Sugar has never met Randy, but what a jerk. Back at camp, Crystal looks through Sugar's bag, unbeknownst to Sugar, of course, and finds that, uh, yeah, she has an idol, and now everyone on Fong knows it. However, GC has been in a bad mood and says, screw it, I don't want to be here anymore, just vote me out. So at Tribal Council, he's gone six to one. GC, Tribe has spoken. Episode 5 sees Maddie and Ace make an alliance which includes the caveat of not voting off Kenny or Sugar. Nice. But then we see that Fong's rice supply is low. 
really low. Apparently, this tribe has been overeating since day one. That's three times a day, and they even had to throw away uneaten rice. Wow, almost unheard of in Survivor. What a waste. Ace then talks to Sugar and says, heads up, everyone knows you have the idol now. And Sugar says, well, I guess Ace, you could hold on to it then. Why? What does this accomplish? I have no idea, but don't dwell on that too long as Randy is back to being a jerk to Sugar at the reward challenge. Can you share? We have one. Uh, no. We want some strawberries. Losing over and over. Randy to me, he's just, He's a troll. He's a troll under the bridge that's just mean and angry with the world. I don't play like that. Do not disrespect me like that. I love winning challenges. More importantly than winning challenges, I absolutely love watching them lose. All right, Coda, who are you gonna send from Thong to Exile Island? Sugar. Sugar, for the fourth time, will be sent to Exile Island. I knew that they were probably gonna send me back to Exile. This is lame, why? why? Why do I get to come back here and and eat fruit when everybody is starving in my tribe and they're running out of food and they don't have anything but rice and I'm feeling really guilty. He's a jerk and they send her to exile for a fourth time. This is getting ridiculous. Sugar has clearly cracked and the vibe has shifted. She has been on exile for I approximate half of the season so far, all by herself not being able to interact with others. They then lose immunity due to Ace thinking he's perfect and can do everything himself, and Crystal then goes on the war path to vote off Sugar, but Maddie says no, Kelly needs to go so we can have numbers at the merge because right now the Fong members know that uh, they're gonna need numbers come the merge. Kenny then talks to Sugar because he wants Ace out and Sugar says, Ace has my idol, it's like no big deal, right? And Kenny's like, what? Why does Ace have your idol? I don't understand. What Sugar doesn't realize is she just accidentally saved Ace's life, which is good for her, but she didn't mean to do that. However, the way she explains her strategic move and why she gave Ace the idol makes her appear thoughtless and dumb when she really isn't. At Tribal Council, Kelly fights with everyone and is promptly voted off five to one. Kelly, the tribe has spoken. Time for the go. Episode six sees the food supply issue getting worse and worse as Crystal spills about a third of the rice on the ground and she tries to pick it up but she can't. They lose a big chunk of rice. In a secret scene, we see them all practicing some yoga stretches for the next challenge in hopes that it will help them win. And at said challenge, Randy is a jerk again. This guy is so ugly over here. He's such an ugly person. He's mean. This should be fun. Yeah. Stay after him, Sugar. Be a hero. <laughs> Fong needs to score. Sugar doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Come on, Sugar. Ace tries to get it past Bob, but Bob shuts him down. Sugar was horrible at the challenge, but Randy being a jerk is so Randy. Except they still haven't met, so he's just being a jerk and she doesn't even know why. But get this, since they lost, Randy gets to pick who goes to Exile Island and... Go ahead and send Sugar. Sugar, this is unprecedented. I don't think we've ever had anybody be sent to exile five times back to back to back to back to back. Yeah, I'm here to break records, you know. <laughs> All right, Sugar, get your stuff. Sugar is a pinup model. She is completely worthless when it comes to challenges. So when it comes to Sugar in this game, I would really, really, really desire her to go. Wow, five times in one season, let alone in a row, is the record. And as of the time of this video, no one has even come close to topping this since. While on Exile, Sugar's like, screw it, I'm back to laughing and enjoying this again because I'm going crazy. But then in a twist, it's revealed that both tribes are going to vote someone out tonight, no matter what. But they're still having a challenge to see who wins individual immunity from each tribe. Marcus, the beloved golden child leader of Coda, wins it, and he gets to pick someone from Fong to have immunity, and he picks Sugar. Back at camp, Kenny talks to Sugar and reveals some information that seems too shocking to be true. I will lie in this game. I will do everything in my power to get her to vote with me because my life and Crystal's life rests upon her. And Manny goes, we're voting out Sugar next immunity challenge. Mm -hmm. And then when Crystal went away, I look at Ace and I'm like, are we really voting out Sugar? And Ace is like, right now Sugar is really good for nothing, except for the hidden mini idol. They think you're like clueless, you're like a dumb blonde or whatever, okay? And Ace thinks he has you wrapped around his finger. Ace is like, well, 
I've actually got the hidden me idol from her once. I could probably do that, and then we can blindside her, and then I'll have the hidden me idol. And I was like, oh my freaking god, this guy is a snake. You and I will say we're voting on Crystal. You vote Ace, I vote Ace, Crystal votes Ace. Can we blindside Ace? Blindside Ace, today. And we don't have to worry about the snake yes. ever again. I'll read the votes. First vote. Ace. Ace. Crystal. We're tied. Seventh person voted out of Survivor Gabon. Ace. Ace, the tribe has spoken. Good luck, guys. Wow. Just like that, she did indeed vote him off. And yes, she did get her idol back from him before he went. Episode 7 has Sugar saying she trusts Kenny since he is just so honest with her. Yikes. But then her, Maddie, Crystal, and Kenny all agreed to go to the end as the final four since they suspect the merge is about to happen and they are down four to six against Coda. They then are sent to the beach where there is a lovely feast and frankly, it seems like a merge to me. As everyone enjoys said feast, a clue to a hidden immunity idol is discovered, read out loud, and within seconds, Randy finds it. Sugar's arch nemesis has the idol. But then Randy and everyone's BFF Marcus says, let's throw it in the ocean so no one has it. Because Randy and Marcus think that they have a six to four advantage over Fong and with this merge, they're just gonna pagong all the Fong members. They're confident they're gonna run this game. And Marcus even says, everyone here is an idiot for letting me do this. So then they open the box to reveal that actually it's not a merge, it's another tribe swap. Wow. Sugar stays on Fong with Maddie, Corinne, Charlie, and Randy. And frankly, Fong is down in numbers on both tribes. They don't stand a chance. Back at camp, Maddie reveals to Sugar that Kenny lied to her multiple times. And of course, Sugar feels like crap for blindsiding Ace unnecessarily, and she cries. However, Maddie single-handedly wins their tribe immunity, which not only saves himself, which is good for their alliance, but it saves Sugar from potentially having to use her idol this soon. So we cut to episode eight, where Sugar and Maddie wait to see which one of their old Fong tribe mates are gone? Getting your first look at the new Coda. Marcus voted out at the last hair. tribal council. Corinne, you look miserable. I'm pissed, yeah. He didn't deserve to leave the game. And who does? Who does deserve to leave the game? Marcus was blindsided. Wow, this is huge. He was the golden child. If Marcus had the numbers in the merge, he was winning this game. Trust me, his whole alliance was just ready to hand it over to him. The Fong tribe wins reward, which nets them a local feast and a celebration. But then it finally happens for reals this time, the merge. We then see that apparently only Susie and Sugar know how to get a fire going and Susie wins immunity. Back at camp, everyone is vying for Sugar's vote as Coda only has four members with Marcus gone and Susie flipping. Let's compare and contrast the approaches, starting with Corinne. I know that he's annoying, Sugar, I know, and I feel you on this, but I'm afraid that we might shoot ourselves in the foot. Literally after this vote, we would be even, like we would still be off one, we can get rid of the next one. I mean, I want you to be comfortable, so I care about your opinion. I mean, I will do what you want to do. Not only do I have to act interested in what Sugar's saying, but I have to act like I care about her. Sugar is so weak and naive and, and gullible. I've been nasty to her for 25 days. I was nice to her one day and she's sold. So it doesn't even make sense, but she buys it because she's such a moron. So I made up this little lie. I said, Charlie, he's behind the scenes of Coda. He's telling people what to do. But really, no, I made it up and everybody listened to me. Charlie is the brains behind the whole Coda cabana. Really? So not. It's not Randy and not Corinne. We will get rid of them as soon as we can. But Charlie tells them what to do, and he's the brains behind really? the whole thing. Yes, but he seems nice. But he goes out and talks to them and whispers to them, okay. and then they they beat themselves. Okay. So yes, once we get rid of Charlie, we can get rid of Randy, Corinne, whoever you want. I think I'm the lady of the hour <laughs> because everybody's telling me who to vote for and chomping at the bit to like get my vote for somebody. Just, you gotta do it with us, get the numbers, blah, blah, blah. Corinne is a jerk and Kenny lies again. This season feels like oops all villains in a weird sort of way, especially since Kenny's just making up this crap to take revenge on Charlie over Charlie doing like a regular everyday game move. Sugar says, I don't know which side to pick, but she does know that she hates Randy. We then cut to tribal council where Crystal fights with Randy and he is just being unnecessarily mean to her and Sugar is burying her head in her hands. So they all go to vote and first vote. Who cast this vote? Uh, CC, Crystal Cox. Crystal. 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 
Charlie. 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 Tenth person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the second member of our jury. Charlie. Charlie, tribe has spoken. I guess it's Fong to the end. Ride or die. This alliance is going all the way. Episode 9 is Bob telling Sugar he didn't find the idol in exile, which, by the way, Sugar's like struggling to keep a straight face because obviously she has it and Bob has no idea. So Bob says, I made this very convincing fake idol that we could utilize. We then go to the survivor auction where players can bid on food items. Sugar wins herself some peanut butter and chocolate, but then she decides to go full villain on Randy. Twice. Beer. Uh-oh. <laughs> And peanuts. 60. 80. 80 to sugar. 100. I don't love beer that much. <laughs> I, don't really like I just wanted to up the ante for <laughs> First 20 bucks buys this for the tribe. 20. You just made a lot of people very happy. <laughs> I can have them all myself if I want. For the tribe. Okay. Frandy. I don't want to sure? thank you. I could you sure? possibly. Thank you. you sure, sugar? Maddie's sugar? getting it. Yes. It's, it's not yours to give to Maddie. I'm the boss. Last chance you can have a full one. Thank you. Randy offers Sugar his own cookie. She takes it and gives it to Maddie. Yeah. Uh, would you like to repeat that? Wow. I think it worked out the way it worked out. Sugar, she can kiss my ass. If she thinks I was bad before, I'm just gonna turn it up a notch. There's a lot of fight left in this dog. The only reason I took his damn cookie is because he didn't want to give me a cookie. He wanted to give everybody a cookie but Sugar because Sugar's evil. Don't ask why, but people this season are so petty that it makes everything here more fun the more you just embrace the chaos and don't worry too much about are they making smart moves because most of them here are not. The Fong Alliance then discusses who should go next. Everyone wants Randy out since he's a jerk, but Maddie says, hey, let's forget about Randy and Corinne for a moment. They're not going to win anything. We should get rid of Bob. He actually could win something. He's the only real code of threat left. But people say, no, we want Randy, which makes sense since Randy goes around being a jerk and tells Susie to shut the F up. Classic Randy. But Sugar has had enough of this nonsense and devises a devious scheme. Randy is an ass and I loathe him with every inch of my being. You didn't tell anybody that you I think that Randy would fall for it. And it would be hilarious. If you think you'd fall for a play just again. Yeah, don't worry. If we figure out a way for me to give it to Randy, I will do that. Sugar wants to play the joke on Randy. My life expectancy is a little bit better off, allowing her to have the satisfaction of me giving Randy the, the idol. I get nothing to lose. I, it's not a real idol. I can't save myself with it. The only way I can save myself for another tribal council is by convincing somebody else to use it. And I think it should do the trick. Is it absolutely pointless strategically? Yes. Will it be fun if it works? Of course. Will Randy be burned as a juror? Absolutely. So Bob gives Randy the fake and Randy believes it's real. And at Tribal Council, Sugar lies and says, the cookie incident, that wasn't on purpose. That was like, I wasn't even really thinking about it. Wow. But then it is time to vote in one of the most iconic Tribal Councils of all time. I'm voting you, Susie, because Baymax a bitch. This vote is not strategic. It's strictly personal. You are a disgust. You have made my life hell from day one. To get you, go home, goodbye. If anybody has the hidden immunity idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. Thank you. This is not a hidden immunity idol. <laughs> First vote, Randy, Susie, Randy. Susie. That's three votes, Susie. Randy. Randy. 11th person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the third member of our jury. Randy. Randy? Chop is spoken. Wow. The next episode, Bob starts off by saying, I am really upset with how you shamed Randy, sugar. 
as if Bob had no hand in what happened. And as if that wasn't enough, she then gets in a fight with Corinne unnecessarily. Corinne, you talk about people all the time behind their back and then to their face, so you act like a really a sweet game. little girl with a little bow on your head. Come I'm on. I'm acting like a sweet girl. If I told everybody to their face what I said behind their back, I wouldn't be playing a very good game, would I? Well, you shouldn't be talking about people behind their back. Why you not? It's Survivor. You don't come here to make friends. You come here to play the game. You said right. it yourself. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head, Corinne. We're here to play the game, and we're playing the game. I am, in general, I'm a nice person to people I like. I am now in a camp of mutants, none of whom I like. So it's very difficult for me to pretend to be nice to them. That's not something I'm used to, and that's done. Sugar can't win this game. There's no way, right? She's burning the jury left and right. Marcus, Charlie, Randy, and Corinne all go hand in hand. They're like a little clique. So if you PO one of them, let alone two of them, they're not gonna vote for you. The jury is only going to be seven people and that's four of them. She's just burning them for funsies. Everyone then gets to watch a short video from home on a very outdated touchscreen phone, which causes Sugar to cry and remember her recently deceased father. But Bob wins reward, gets some alone time with his wife, hello, and upon him coming back to camp, they are all surprised when... This, this is really cool, watch us. I did it, it's Survivor kind of because I thought it might help me get a little bit of closure from my dad's passing. Thanks, Dad, for everything you've done for me, and I know that you're the one, you're the reason that I'm here, and that you're with me every day that I've been here, especially when we were on exile, and thank you for this awesome opportunity, and thanks for being here with me and keeping me strong. Have fun in Africa, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't speak at his funeral because I was a big mess. So it felt good to say a few words because I really needed him here and I feel like he's, like I already felt like he was here, but I feel like um, I brought him to Africa and he got to stay. <laughs> Times like these are when I disagree with my earlier statement. Sugar has to win, right? She's playing a good game and the salty jury just needs to get over that and vote for her anyways. I'm really conflicted right now. Maddie again says we need to vote off Bob because he is a massive threat, but then Bob wins immunity, so that isn't happening. And at Tribal Council, what should be an easy vote for Corinne isn't because people are starting to flip. <laughs> First vote, Maddie. Corinne, one vote Maddie, one vote Corinne. Maddie, two votes Maddie. Maddie, Corinne, two votes Corinne. Corinne, that's three votes Corinne. Twelfth person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the fourth member of our jury. Corinne. Corinne, the tribe has spoken. Time for the go. Kenny flipped, sure, they still got their target off, but he broke the Fong Alliance, and this has massive implications moving forward. Kenny then says, I'm the mastermind here, but he was just fooled by Corinne and her telling him that she has an idol when she didn't, Sugar has the idol. So he thinks he's the mastermind still now, even after that, but Kenny is a fool. Bob then wins reward and that is three challenges in a row for him. We then see Maddie fight with Kenny over the flip that Kenny did and Maddie wants Kenny and Crystal out next and no longer really cares about Bob. Maddie talks to Sugar and Sugar's like, yeah, but like I'm still aligned with Kenny and Crystal. Like Sugar, what are, what are you doing? And Maddie's talking to you, just side with him. Side with him right now. So of course Maddie's angry, why wouldn't he be? But the fighting between Crystal, Kenny, and Maddie doesn't stop, and Sugar hates this. I have no idea what's happening right now. Crystal is going off on Maddie for no reason, and I've already seen Kenny go off on Maddie, and Maddie doesn't deserve to be yelled at. Kenny acts like he's this weak, little, meager guy, and he spends all these lies, and Crystal is just a big bully. Why would they kick you? when you're down. It feels like they're just going off on you when when you know you're going. But you're not going. Why don't I just... Uh... You're not going to go. Okay. Sure, so are you truthful not, right I now? I am not. If Sugar really is telling me the truth, I have hope. It's all a matter of perspective. And from Sugar's point of view, the Jedi are evil. 
I mean, uh, Kenny and Crystal are being the bullies, and Bob then wins another challenge, this time for immunity, and Kenny says, I need you all to play along with me, as I'm going to trick Bob into giving me his necklace so I can vote him off. And Sugar says, hmm, no. Kenny has come up with this elaborate plan to hoax Bob out of his necklace. If Bob were to give Kenny the necklace, then everybody would vote for Bob because they want to keep their five alliance. I don't want to be aligned with all those guys. I want to be aligned with the good guys. They told me that if you give Kenny the uh, necklace, then he's gonna, they're going to blindside you. That's the plan. And uh, see, I wouldn't know that unless they told me that. I think we should vote for Crystal. Sugar said to me that it was a blindside coming which is an interesting thing. Because she hasn't done anything that, to show me that I can trust her. She has not done anything that shows me I can't trust her. I really have a big place in my heart for you. I appreciate that. I will not vote for you. I know you're the biggest threat, but I don't care. I just think the good guy should win in the end. Solely because Sugar told him to, Bob does not give Kenny the necklace at Tribal Council. And Kenny is completely shook up by this. He really thinks he's running the show and everyone else is dumb. So they all go to vote and... Maddie, take this cursed thing away. The rules of Survivor state that if somebody plays a hidden immunity idol, then any votes cast against that person will not count. The person with the next highest number of votes will be voted out. This is indeed a hidden immunity idol. First vote, Maddie does not count. Maddie does not count. Crystal, one vote for Crystal. Crystal, 13th person voted out in the fifth member of our jury. Crystal. Crystal, tribe has spoken. Finale time. It's Bob versus Sugar versus Susie versus Maddie versus Kenny. Who's going to win it all? Well, the episode starts and Sugar says the power has shifted and she is now in control running the show. Sugar tells Bob that she wants him and Maddie at the end with her. That's the final three. He says, hey, whatever you want, we're gonna do. But then Sugar plays an Uno reverse card on Kenny. And after all that lying he did to her all season, she turns the tables on him. She does it back to him. She says, Kenny, you're safe. We're definitely not voting you off next. And Kenny says, wow, I feel great knowing that Susie's next to go and not me. I don't have to scramble. Bob then wins yet another immunity challenge. And at Tribal Council, Kenny is still trying to trick Bob out of his necklace and admits that if Bob does so, then he's going to vote off Bob. Wow, why would Bob give him the necklace then? They all go to vote and notice how the jury is excited by this result. 14th person voted out in the sixth member of our jury, Kenny. Kenny? Tribe has spoken. Was that pro sugar or anti Kenny? We shall see. It is now time for the final immunity challenge. But before that, they do their rites of passage where they all reminisce about who has been voted off so far and when they get to Randy's torch. Randy. You know what I got to say about Randy? Well, 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 in a plot twist no one saw coming, Susie wins immunity and messes up Sugar's perfect final three plan. So she cries and debates on who to vote off next. Maddie, who's like her brother, or Bob, who kind of reminds her of her father. As of now, Susie and Maddie plan to vote for Bob, which gives Sugar an idea that seems nice, but really is kind of just her weaseling her way out of what she should be doing. If she votes you. And then it's up to fate. That would be really nice. I appreciate that. Causing a tie is an option worth considering. I guess that would be giving Bob another chance, but I told Manny I would never write his name down. I never promised Bob that, but to me, Bob is a father figure. I lost my dad recently, and that's probably why I kind of have the feeling of love towards Bob. He's the father figure of our tribe. Oh, God. It is a tough choice because it's like choosing between my dad and my brother. Just vote Bob off. Don't leave any CODA members at the final three for the jurors to latch on to. At Tribal Council, Sugar says that no matter what, she knows at this point she's already going to lose the game. We then see the jury nod and agree, so I guess Sugar's onto something here. And she says this is more about her deciding who will win instead. So they all go to vote and... First vote, Bob. Bob. Maddie. Maddie. 
In the case of a tie with only four people left, we go to a fire-making tiebreaker challenge. First person to build a flame high enough that lasts long enough to burn through the rope stays in this game, joins Susie and Sugar at the final tribal council. This challenge is on. We're getting a lot of spark, but no flame yet. Bob, first to get fire. Bob and Maddie fighting for a spot at that final tribal council and a chance to plead their case for a million dollars. Bob's got an inferno going right now. Bob has burned through the rope. Bob has won this challenge. Bob is moving on to the final and will have a shot at winning this game in the million dollars. Maddie, Travis Spoken. Time to go. The mood around here is kind of tense. Susie's pissed off that Bob is here instead of Maddie. I'm sorry that I had to vote for Maddie, but there was no way I could have sent Bob out after everything everybody's learned from him, everything he's done this whole time. I couldn't make that decision, and I let I led it up to the universe, and I think the universe made a good decision. I appreciate that, Sugar. I know you, you like this vote. You've done letting the fire god make the decision, and Susie, I know you don't want me to be here with you, but... Yeah, no, it's not, not, it's not that. I, because she had told me she was going to, and I trusted that. But I, I've told a lot of people a lot of things. You told me and, stuff. Yeah, I know. But no, I, I mean, what, what's, it's all right for you to lie to me. But when, when somebody does it to you, 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 you just like... Get upset. That nighttime scene when they come back from camp is actually just a secret scene that was completely cut from the show. And I think it's because it's a little bit darker. Whereas in the actual show's edit, it cuts from the tribal council to the next morning. It's kind of like light and sweet. That scene, I feel like it's a bit darker. And this episode doesn't need to be any darker, as you'll soon see. Sugar says she's a bit scared of the jury because she's responsible for them all leaving this game, except for Marcus. But let's do this final tribal council. <laughs> Susie, Bob, Sugar, congratulations. You have gone as far as you can go in this game. It is Bob versus Susie versus Sugar. I truly believe that a good performance here from Sugar could net her some votes. I'm not sure if it would be enough to win. I think she made a mistake leaving Bob in the game, but giving everything she has could help her pull a surprise out of her hat. So it's time for opening speeches. This is where you own your game and you can set the tone for whether the jury is at least going to respect you or not. Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> Uh, I'm sitting up here because I feel like I played a perfect social game. I surprised myself in the physical department a couple times, but um, I had to lie, and that's part of the game a couple times, and I had to sacrifice some innocence, and I'm really sorry. And uh, 38 days, nobody wrote down my name, but everybody thought about it. So uh, the immunity necklace I found within 24 hours of my stay on Exile and didn't play it till the very end, and uh, I think I... I played a pretty darn good game for somebody who's physically weak and didn't know what the heck I was doing when I started. But I never sought out an alliance until I made an alliance with Bob at the end to save him because I feel he deserves to be up here. And that's it. Thanks for playing. <laughs> oh boy, this is gonna be one of those endings, huh? Charlie's the first juror and he simply asked Sugar why she should get his vote. She says, actually, you don't really have to vote for me, but I guess it would be nice. Great, Sugar, just wonderful. Crystal's the second juror and she asked why she was blindsided. So Sugar states. It was because the way you talk and treat people, even though that's the way you are, and I, I like it, you were bullying people. So I know that it would be strategically better for you to be up here with me than Bob. But I went with my heart, thought that you would forgive me, and I, I believe that you will. I believe that we would still be friends. Okay, Sugar isn't winning. She was right. This is a massive train wreck happening one juror at a time. Is there anyone she's actually going to try and appease? I don't think so. Kenny is the third juror, and he says, Sugar, you were the only girl I could really trust in this game. And he asks why he was blindsided. Sugar cries and says he was just the biggest threat left in the game. Kenny is stone-faced and says, I don't believe you. Corinne is the fourth juror and she just kind of goes off. Susie, I have one question for you. And if you can answer yes to this question, I will give you my million dollar vote. If you get the money, 
Will you agree to have your vocal cords removed? <laughs> Sugar, you are an unemployed, uneducated leech on society. And the only thing I would vote to give you is a handful of antidepressants so that no one else has to be subjected to your constant crying anymore. And maybe if you got some, then it would seem a little more sincere when you are crying about your dead father. You don't deserve the million. Marcus is next and he asks Sugar if she will use the money she wins to honor her family. And in the most unconvincing way she can, she says, I hadn't really thought about it, but sure. Just knocking it out of the park, Sugar. Randy is the sixth juror and he asks, Sugar, the night I was voted out, you proceeded to roll on the dirt, laughing uncontrollably. Did you not know that I was going to the jury? Did you not want my vote? Did you just figure there's no way I'm getting it anyway? So I'll make a jackass out of him? I don't think I needed to do that because you did that yourself. That's your answer? That's, yeah. that's your answer for a million bucks? Yeah. You just. You were a jerk. You were a jerk the whole time. Sorry. Okay. All three of you, kiss my. This may be the worst final tribal council performance I have ever seen or ever covered in any story video, and it's not even close. I mean, this is just baffling levels of awful, but at least Randy's voting professional was funny. Maddie is the last year, and he asked Sugar to admit to something evil she did in this game because he doesn't really buy her, oh, I'm so sweet, innocent persona. And she says, backstabbing Kenny was her evil move. And for whatever reason, Maddie doesn't like this answer, though if I had to guess, I think it's because Maddie's looking for her not voting to keep him in the final three. But now it's time for the live reunion show and for Jeff to read the votes for who wins it all. Susie. <laughs> Susie. <laughs> Susie. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Bob. Bob. We are tied. Three votes, Susie. Three votes, Bob. The winner of Survivor Gabon, Bob. So let's break this down. How is Sugar as a character? I am so conflicted. Clearly, she is an emotional wreck considering the loss of her father and how that greatly affects her. But then she's just kind of like mean for funsies. But then she wants to stand up against bullies. Then she plays a devious game herself. But then she has like this electric personality that steals the show. It's amazing, but it's kind of exhausting too. I love Sugar. I wish she was given another chance to play just based on her personality alone. But the whiplash of her being a hero and a villain this season leaves me scratching my head. And I think that was the point of the story that we're all a bit confused by Sugar. Out of 26 character moments shown in the show, 13 were heroic and 13 were villainous, making Sugar a polarizing character on Survivor Gabon. Now, how is Sugar as a strategist? Well, her story left us with whiplash, but if you think about it, most of her heroic moments were in a private confessional or on Exile Island when no one could see her. Her villainous moments were very public and in doing so, she created a lot of enemies despite playing a ruthless game that could have won the jury's respect. If she didn't disrespect them, obviously. For every great move Sugar would make, it felt like she would make two smaller worse moves that undercut it. The first time I saw the season, I saw her as a robbed hero, but on a rewatch, I see the truth. Out of 55 strategic moments shown on the show, 24 were smart and 31 were dumb, making Sugar a dumb strategist on Survivor Gabon. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.